Time for another stock review. This time we're looking at SATS, S-A-T-S, Echo Star. In this video, we're going to go deep dive into the numbers. We're going to look at the balance sheet. We're going to see how much debt they have, who's buying on the inside, who's selling on the inside. We're going to look at the latest news. We're going to look at the website. We're going to look at the investor pages, the breaking news, very, very important merger. We're going to cover all of that. Uh, during the video, you're going to get an informed decision whether EcoStar is good for you. This is not financial advice, but this is my real money using the most advanced algorithmic software known to man. Any review that you see is paid by someone. Someone has paid someone to present it. I do all my reviews for free for my members. It's a membership perk. I'm not biased in any way whatsoever. And I provide you with real numbers, real facts to show you who's buying, who's selling, the short positions, what the cash is, the margins, everything. And there's no bias whatsoever. And many times we have found great stocks to buy literally just before they pop. We had it with Seduce Space a couple of days ago. I did a review on it, said this was a great buy, and we're up three to 400% on it within a week or so now. Now it's up again today. Fantastic. That's what we do. We're looking for value. We're looking for the information. We don't want false information as presented on CNBC and Jim Cramer, stuff like that. That's all there <coughs> to sell TV. This is not, excuse me, it's made during a live video. This is not to sell videos. You might go, well, of course it is. You're on YouTube. No, I'm not a YouTuber. I'm the world piano man. I've taught the world entertaining people in person. And what I do is I'm making this during a live video. Anybody else you, you see a video uh, on YouTube, they're making it, editing it offline. I'm doing this during a live, a live show. Someone could comment during the live show as I make this. So it's real. It's genuine. It's made live. And these are my opinions and it's honest. Okay. So there we go. If it's your very first time here, click subscribe and ring the bell. In a few moments, I'll give you the opportunity to get the software that I'm using, which is the most advanced algorithmic software in the world. I believe you can use it for free. If you want the premium version, my members get a 10% discount and which basically makes my membership free. That is the best discount. Nobody, including Bloomberg, CNBC has that deal. It's the best deal in the world. All right, let's go straight into it and discover, first of all, what this company is. We want to know what the company is, what's it all about. Let's go in. We start nice and simple. And as we go further down into the review, it will get more and more complex as we go. So I make no apologies for making it look simple at the beginning, but uh, investing doesn't have to be uh, difficult at all. It doesn't have to be complicated with fancy charts. It doesn't need to be. Okay, let's look at the company. What is it? Echo Star. We can see how volatile it is, first of all, the way it, um, from, t from 2008, the way it pops up and down violently, and now we're back down again. Uh, let's have a look what the company is. Echo Star Corporation, and I invite all of you at Echo Star to please join me. I have a Meet the CEO series where I interview the CEO of the company, and I, and I will send out, out, send out an invitation. I'd love you to be on my show and share me your thoughts on your company and your story. Engages in the design, development, and distribution of digital desk uh, digital set-top boxes and products for direct-to-home satellite service providers. Okay, that's what it does, is it? It operates with the following business segments, Hue, Echostar, Satellite Services. Interesting. Let's open that up a bit more. The Hue segment uh, provides uh, broadband satellite technologies and broadband internet services for domestic and international customers and broadband network technologies, uh, managed uh, services, equipment, hardware, satellite services, and communication solutions for service providers and enterprise customers. The ESS segment owns and leases in-orbit satellites in license in, and licenses to lease capacity on a full time and occasional use. The company was founded by Charlie William Ergen, uh, Candy Ergen and James D. Franco in 1980 and is headquartered in Inglewood, California, uh, Inglewood, um, CO, Colorado. The listed name for SATS is EcoStar Corporation. Okay, fantastic. Around in 1980, now, my concern right off the bat with a company like this, I always buy value. I always buy proprietary, unique, one-off companies, well-funded, good balance sheets, 
good position, not traded violently uh, by gamblers and speculators. Many, many things have to be in my portfolio, in the, in the, in, in the, checkbox, if you like, in the checklist before I buy a company. Straight off the bat, looking at this or what this company does, um, I have to be honest, there there are two things that come to mind. First of all, if we're looking at digital set-top boxes for digital TV and stuff like that, I'm assuming we'll find more about it in a moment, um, is... First of all, uh, I am very bullish on when when it's available for uh, Starlink. I think that's going to be the leader in that in this sector. Uh, also, uh, I'm a believer in internet TV, not satellite TV or cable TV. I think that is a thing of the 80s. Hence, this company came out in the 80s. I don't think that's a thing of the future. I don't think that uh, satellite TV. Or, uh, or, 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 or or cable TV or terrestrial TV will be around much longer. I think it's all about uh, internet-based TV. Of course, you can get internet from satellite. I appreciate that. Um, but I think then you're in the world of uh, Starlink, and I think Starlink will own the whole sector when it, uh, when it starts really expanding. That's my initial reaction to what I've just seen. Anyway, let's move on down. Let's move on down. Um, 2,300 employees around in 1980. Uh, equipment uh, maintenance. If you bought this with ma uh, with margin, it's regarded as uh, relatively mid-risk. 25% uh, is the lowest, 100% is the highest. So uh, even though it's volatile, I thought it would have actually been more like 100%. But 45, it shows uh, some potential there. Uh, it's not as risky as it might be using margin. Okay, it's a $2.3 billion market cap. The high today is $12.84. The 52-week high is $24.80. Gives you the range there. Low today, $12.51. 52-week low, $9.53. Okay. No dividend. Of course, it's a growth stock. Um, average volume, 4.83. So it's a low volume stock, so you can get stuck in the stock. If you're trying to sell at the price you want, there may be nobody willing to pay the price that you're paying that you want to sell your stocks for. So be very careful on low volume. Uh, it's uh, 400 million today, sorry, 400,000 today, uh, which is below average today. Not a lot going on with the stock. It's 9.53 central time. So I don't expect that to change too much. We've got the news. We'll cover that shortly. Uh, Morningstar, which is not an analyst ratings I go by at all, but I'm starting simple. We'll get into my review in a minute. Um, they're paid to, you know, they're sponsored to give their re reports, and I don't believe a word of it half the time. Um, anyway, so as you can see, uh, they are fairly accurate when it comes to their opinions uh, on on the on the. Um, uh, estimate uh, the estimates. Remember, the company don't do their estimates. It's done by it's done by Wall Street, and you can see there uh, that uh, they expected this price, and it missed on earnings. Missed on earnings. Uh, it beat on earnings. They were wrong there, and then it missed. It's right. B, it missed, and then it missed again. Okay, we are seeming to be in a downtrend at the moment on earnings. We are making money. This is a profitable company. It does earn money per share. However, we are declining. Okay. Um, Morningstar is saying it's a hold uh, to a buy. No one's selling it. That's what, that's what they say. Okay. Who are we in bed with? This is important. Um, now, someone pointed out this is only on Robin Hood. That is correct. On Robin Hood, um, this will tell me who on Robin Hood is also buying the stock. AT&T. Not a fan of AT&T. I think it's an old school stock. A bit like Satellite, I think is old school. I don't know if it's really in much of the future. AT&T uh, is uh, not a great company for me. I don't think, I don't really like it. Uh, Intel, I don't have enough experience on it. Verizon, don't have much experience on that either. Ford, I have reviewed Ford. I don't know why anyone buys Ford, uh, honestly. Um, I think the only people that buy Ford are those that are, uh, that get um, stock options, that get paid in stock. I don't know any, why anyone would buy Ford. Um, if you look at Ford, it's gone sideways forever. It doesn't make any money. I just don't get it. And now they're backtracking from 
uh, building EVs, they're scaling back. I don't know if Ford can even survive. And I think if it wasn't for government funding, Ford would be out of business years ago. So I don't see any, any point in owning Ford. But it just gives me an idea of the sort of people that are buying it. And it looks like what I expected. Old school technology, old school principles, old school ideas. Uh, you can see, look, uh, Warner Brothers Discovery. Um, you can see some some companies that don't really make any money, been around forever, safe bets. That, to me, again, gives me a few warnings that I don't know where this is going. I, I, it's not one for me. It, it, it doesn't tick the first few boxes straight off the bat. It's not innovative enough, in my opinion. It's old technology, in my opinion. Um, satellite is future. I, I get satellite is the future. However, um, I think TV will be delivered by the internet far more reliably. And if we are going to compete in the satellite space, I just think we just wait to buy Starlink. But anyway, that's my initial reaction looking at that. All right. Very volatile stock coming down, not really going anywhere. Let's, let's look at it over the last, uh, over the last month. It's down, it's up 99%, uh, 0.9%. Uh, nearly 1%. The last three months, it's down. All my portfolio is up 48% over the last three months. So this is going to underperform my position. So I wouldn't uh, be looking at that. Year to date, it's down 23%. Nothing here, 23% over a year, five years down. I mean, look, five years, 66% down. This is a Ford. It, it looks like a Ford. Uh, maximum uh, over the long period, uh, down 63%. This is just holding on. I, I, I don't see any point. It doesn't even provide a dividend. So nothing about this so far is going by it. Absolutely nothing. Uh, just because it's down and it's cheaper compared to what it was. I don't know where the growth would ever come from, from a company like this. However, let's uh, let's go and have a look. We do have some latest news though from the company. Let's go and have a look now. Echo Star Corporation, uh, if, by the way, tap the like button if you've uh, got this far in the video. I'd appreciate that very much indeed and consider subscribing as well. It really helps the channel. All right. Echo Star Corporation completes merger with Dish Network Corporation, January 22nd, just a couple of days ago. EcoStar fortifies its position as a global connectivity leader with unmatched wireless satellite and video distribution. Well, the title sounds great, but the stock doesn't make any money and hasn't done for many, many years. Englewood, uh, uh, Colorado, um, January 2nd, 2004, uh, EchoStar announced today the completion of its acquisition of Dish Network. Um, Subsidiary, subsidiary of Echo Star merged with, uh, in, merged with and into Dish Network. With Dish Networks uh, surviving the merger as a wholly owned subsidiary of Echo Star, as previously announced, as a result of the merger, each share of Dish Network Class A common stock and Dish Network Class C common stock is converted into 0.35 shares of Echo Star Class A common stock and. Uh, and each share of Dish Network Class B common stock are converted into 0.35 shares of EcoStar. Okay, 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 great. So what we should have here is uh, some kind of uh, pot because we are getting, um, it's, like, it's like basically buying the shares, if you like. Pe uh, we are converting from one to another. Uh, it, the stock should get a bit of a bounce. Um, but however, we're not, uh, we're getting the very opposite of that. If we look at the stock right now, we're down over the week, 23%. It should have actually improved. Um, but anyway, it hasn't. Let's see what people think about this. Let's read more in, into the information. The merger brings us one step closer to our goal of offering ambiguous connectivity to people, enterprise Enterprises and things everywhere, said Hamid uh, Akhazan. Hakavan, I, that's the president and chief uh, executive officer. I do apologize for the pronunciation. Together, we're better positioned to realize the connected future by leveraging every type of transport combined with smart enabling technologies and fully integrated services. Our superior portfolio of technology, spectrum engineering, manufacturing and network uh, management expertise will deliver the unparalleled connectivity solutions that customers demand. Okay, 
So it's more than just TV that then I'm, I'm learning here. The transaction combines dish networks, satellite technology, streaming services, and nationwide 5G network, okay, with Ecostar's premier satellite communication solutions, creating a global leader in terrestrial and non-terrestrial wireless connectivity. Both companies have strong momentum highlighted by Dish Network's 5G uh, wireless network that now covers more than 70% of the United States population. And the successful launch of EcoStar's Jupiter 3 satellite with significant available, uh, available capacity for converged terrestrial and non-terrestrial services. The combined companies is uh, uniquely positioned to deliver a broad set of communication and, and content distribution capabilities, accelerating the delivery of satellite and wireless connectivity solutions desired by customers. Okay, merger, potentially good news, sounding okay, but so far we're not delivering on the on, on, on the stock price. At the end of the day, as an investor, I am looking to uh, you know return a profit here. About EcoStar, let's have a quick look, a bit more information before we go into the, num the numbers that will really tell us everything. We are EcoStar, a premier global provider of satellite communication solutions headquartered in, in uh, Englewood and conducting businesses uh, business around the globe. EcoStar is a pioneer in secure communications technology through its Hue network system and, and EcoStar uh, satellite services. Okay, let's read a bit more brings reliable and innovative solutions to the satellite industry. Okay, that's what we learned from that page. What about the investors? Um, how do they talk to the investors? Let's read this. I'll be interested to see what they say here. It's one of the premier, the premier global providers of satellite operations. EcoStar's wholly owned subsidiary, Hughes, is the world's leading provider of satellite broadband services delivering network technologies and managed services in more than 100 countries. Okay, good good uh, words. However, not delivering anything. It's like Ford. They say great things, but not make any money for their shareholders. It might be a good business. We'll come on to the numbers in a minute, but it's not returning anything to the shareholder, which is, which, which, which is me. Headquartered in, in Englewood with businesses, uh, uni business units worldwide, EcoStar is a multiple Emmy Award winning. Uh, you remember I've always said I, I, I don't care about awards. Many people have awards. Um, you know, we've heard about the awards where people are hired by marketing company, hire marketing companies um, to, to, to create awards saying, you know, best car and best this, best that. JD Power, it's always the, the Chevy is always the best car. And it's, it's, it's hired by Chevy as a marketing company to say, I mean, it, I mean I'll, I'll give awards if you want. I'll say, you know, who the best anything is. Pay me to say you're the best anything and you know i'll say it i mean i won't but you get my point i, I don't get excited by awards uh, I, I just get excited by profit um anyway um advanced in the satellite industries for nearly 30 years consistently delivering value for customers partners and investors i see it might provide a service to its customers i just don't see it providing a service to its investors i don't see how you can say that looking at the numbers. I mean, you know, the numbers don't lie. If we bought this stock um, in uh, in 2008, we're down 63%. I'm not quite sure how it's uh, delivering value for its investors. And I'd love someone to uh, comment on that. Much appreciate that. Anyway, let's go into the numbers and see if it actually makes sense. See if the company makes sense or it may make a return in the future. All right. Let's look at the valuation then, shall we? Best case scenario. Best case scenario. We're not in a best case scenario right now. High inflation. We've got uh, all sorts of issues, macro conditions. So <clears throat> the world is not perfect. Let's not to regard that. Base case scenario. Well, 34%. <coughs> Excuse me. I have a dry throat this morning. Let me just have a quick drink. All right. This is made during a live show, unedited as it is. So there you go. Apologize for that. Base case, 34% uh, under value. But let's look in a, in a moment. Some people like Morningstar 
will calculate this, give it a buy because it's undervalued. However, we need to look at more than just the intrinsic value. There's much, much more. And we'll come on to that in a moment. Worst case scenario, 22% undervalued. Okay. On the basis of it, that would be very, very good. On the basis of it, that would be good because if the uh, S&P can make you 15% a year and on worst case scenario, 22%, why not buy this? Makes sense, right? If you believe in the growth of the company. As I say, I if I was going to invest in a satellite company, I'm going to go all in on Starlink. I'm just saying. However, we shall see further in the video. Right, so intrinsic value looks good so far, but do we have any warnings? I would bet we do. I would bet we do. Let's see if we do. Is there a valuation trap? No. Uh, there is not a valuation trap. So it's regarded. I said, I bet we do. And we don't. Uh, it's it's uh, We have all the information. And that is a real valuation. Okay, sometimes we can have an undervaluation, but it's never it's never it's never likely to perform there. So it could be a what's called a valuation trap. There is no valuation trap. This could be a good valuation for um, EcoStar. Okay, anywhere from from here was regarded as undervalued. It's just got it just got cheaper and cheaper and cheaper. Okay, so no valuation trap. It's a tick so far from the valuation side of things. Now then, the earnings call, Q, earnings call, call, apologize, earnings call, call, why am I going cool? Earnings call, Q3, uh, this was the information that we use our AI software to, uh, to, to compile what was said by the company during that call to put down this comment here. This is what they say. The company has, has ventured further into the in-flight services market. In-flight services market. Okay, providing internet then and services on planes. Interesting. Didn't know that before. This is this is why we cover the earnings and this is the information dragged from there. A sector expected to grow for, uh, grow from 1.3 billion today to over 4 billion. I will agree with that. I will agree with that. We do need better internet and services in flight. Definitely. More than I'm concerned and bothered about, uh, you know, TV and stuff like that, like I've already said. Um, th that's an interesting sector. My, my, my ears are pricked up on that. Plus, we've got the valuation report, which seems to be okay. So maybe EcoStar is a good buy at this point. All right, we've done the fundamentals, looking at what the company is. Now we're looking at the business and the numbers. All right, leveraging its relationship with multi-global airlines and the impending introduction of Jupiter 3, the company aims to transition uh, from a su supporting role to a direct integrated supplier, enhancing its offerings and utilizing advanced technologies from Hughes alongside the enterprise arm is booming. With a backlog nearly t nearing two billion, indicating a strategic shift from consumer reliance to enterprise opportunities, which promise more sustainability, yes, and long-term revenue, yes, that I can agree with. That I can agree with. I think there is potential there. I um, don't, again, Star could Starlink ultimately get in that business, maybe. Um, but I think this company more likely to capitalize on that now, uh, a fourth quarter for sh and knowing airlines, once they integrate into their planes, it's going to be very hard to, to change that. Anyway, fourth quarter foreshadows this because they're very slow at changing things in the, in the aerospace industry. This upward trajectory, even prior to Jupiter's three impact, making a recovery from the previous quarters with a brighter outlook for 2024. Okay. That part of it, I like. All right, let's look at the financials. Okay, well, uh, 1.8 billion revenue down on the recent range, expected to increase, not by much. Now, we're not going to see an S-curve. It's not a new company. It's not suddenly going to explode unless, of course, they, they think that we can get into the aerospace industry and, 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 and do big things there. I don't know, but uh, we're not expecting huge growth, which is obviously disappointing, but 4% down, but we are expecting some. Uh, most recent range, 14% down operating income. Um, 
So we are see. Oops, a daisy. Uh, what happened there? I just clicked something. Let me just come back to that. There we go. I must have just tapped the screen. Operating income um, down 14% on the most recent range. Expecting that to increase. But it does seem secular, doesn't it? You look for a dip here. We are in a dip, maybe. Anyway, net income. Net income is down 17% on the most recent range. Um, and we are expecting things to get a bit down a bit further. Hence why... Um, the stock price might be down. We're not expecting much uh, through until 2025 when uh, that business takes off again. Anyway, free cash flow down point th uh, down uh, down three percent on the most recent range. It's very up and down, isn't it? I don't like a business. I don't like businesses like this. Capital expenditure. We've been uh, spending a lot of money in 2016, getting less, 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 less. We've just increased it by 8% over the last range, though. That's interesting. Obviously, they're building out that uh, system we just spoke about a few moments ago. Operating cash flow, I like cash flow, very, very important, uh, is up 4% on the most recent range. Right, let's look at their balance sheet. What's the health of this company? What is the health of this company? <clears throat> I would have said not that good if we look at the stock price, <clears throat> but we shall see. 6.2 billion in assets, 2 billion in cash. Well, that's pretty good. 2 billion is in cash. We hold a substantial amount of cash, $2 billion in cash. Basically, a third of their assets is in cash. That's good. That's good. Let's look at the debt situation though, all right? 2.7 billion, so half of their company is liabilities. Okay, how much of that is long-term debt? Long-term debt is half of their liabilities. 1.5 billion, long-term debt. Interest rates are high, not good. Half of their liabilities is not investment, is long-term debt. Money they've already spent, Things they've already benefited, the bit they've already bought the services, bought the equipment, acquired things. They've spent the money. The money is spent. It's now in debt. Okay? Uh, I don't like that. Half of their liabilities is long-term debt. 56% of their liabilities is not short-term, but long-term debt, which is half of their liabilities, which is... Uh, uh, um, a quarter of their assets. If we look at the assets is uh, 6.2, liabilities is about uh, 50%, which is good. So there's not too much liabilities, but half of that is long-term debt. I don't like that. Let's look at the margins. 57% margin. Making a decent margin, but we want to compare to the industry. And in, in, in a minute, I'm going to show you the industry, other in, in, in businesses you can compare to. No point saying, oh, great, 57% 57 margin if the industry is making 80% margin, which means their moat is narrow, which means they can be crushed, which means their competition can take them over. Right? So gross margin is all very well and good, but we need to compare it to others in the sector. And in a minute, I'll give the opportunity to go and check the, the, the competition yourself. Operating margin, 8%. Net margin, 5%. Uh, so I don't know if that's good or low margins. I don't know. I've got to compare it to the industry. All right? Okay, here we go. Fundamental score. Profitability, 49 out of 100. 49%. Okay. Positive gross profit, positive cash flow, return of equity is increasing. That's an important uh, metric. Positive revenue growth forecast, not that good. Uh, it's not a bright green, you know, the, the outlook isn't great. Uh, if we look at it, we could see that uh, we're expecting revenue to fall away. Um, profits to get lower, margins to get lower. We've seen all of that. So it's now a good time to buy it. Well, of course, the, the uh, stock market is pricing that in. So it's already discounted. It's already down. The intrinsic value would suggest it is actually a good value because we've priced in everything being a little bit downturn for a while, but we are expecting things to improve in 2025, 20, 26. However, uh, by the time we get to 25, 26, is Starlink going to be available to buy as an IPO? 
uh, can Starling compete? I don't know. Will it? Well, you make your judgment on that. Uh, solvency score. Well, uh, it's got a tick for short-term, low DE, long-term solvency, negative net debt. That's all looking okay. 50%. It's not going bust. It's got a quite a bit of debt, but it's not in the red uh, when it comes to uh, a solvency score. That's around about 25, 30. We're at 50. Give you an idea. Uh, Apple's around about the 87%, something like that. So, uh, you know, it's not an Apple, right? Um, it's not, uh, it's not comfortable. It's got a lot of debt and it's, 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 it's taking a toll on the company. 50%. So it's, uh, you know, once we get about 60%, it starts turning green. So it's okay. It's not going bust. You can invest in it knowing it's not going to be, it's not going to disappear in the next, next few years. That's, that's not, uh, that's not going to happen. Right. Wall Street, uh, target. Well, Best case scenario, 206%. Forget that figure. That's bonkers. Uh, certainly for the, this is a year. <laughs> certainly for this year. Uh, 97%. I think that's a bit rich as well. Uh, over this year, looking at where, we, where we're where we seeing uh, the prices going. Uh, but that outperforms the S&P. It's a good price to buy it. Um, anyway, so, you know, what do you think? Um, downside 4%. Not a huge downside, worst case scenario. So if you like this sector, you think this company has got some legs, uh, it's undervalued from, a, from an intrinsic point of view, its solvency score is okay, uh, its profitability is okay, uh, it, it, are there better opportunities? Most certainly. But it is undervalued right now, but it hasn't proved anything for many, 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 many years um, is it now going to turn it around? I don't really know. Honestly, uh, I don't know, to be fair. Now then, um, Global Star uh, and Cogent, uh, is it, I think Cogent, uh, Cogent uh, Communications Holdings, you need to go and click on these. I will give you the link for these in a moment, and you can go and look at these, compare their balance sheets, compare their margins, and see if you like this sector, if you like this space, you can uh, compare the news between the two, compare the margins between the two, and then make an informed decision. Who's buying, who's selling? Uh-uh, that doesn't look so good. Uh, during the last 12 months, EcoStar insiders have have not bought any shares. They've not bought any shares, even though it's right down here at the moment. They've not bought any shares. Well, that's not encouraging, is it? Um, and have sold 37,000. That's not a big deal. They've sold $37,000. So they've sold something, but it's so insignificant uh, that was Mike Schroeder on December the 13th. So it's over a year, uh, December 13th, 2023. Yeah, just a, a few weeks ago. Uh, that could simply be a uh, tax position. That's nothing. Um, that is nothing. It's one of the directors, um, Mike Schroeder, uh, director who sold 37,000. That's no big deal. That could be a tax thing. Um, so nothing major. They'd sold millions of shares, okay, but you know uh, that's no big. That's not a big deal, okay. So don't be put off by that. But there's n there's no there's no buys. There's no buying in, and and you know it doesn't look good. But uh, it's not it's not a major turn off. Put it that way. Uh, anyway, let's have a look at the short interest. Now this is a p bit of a problem as well. It's not too much short interest, like above the 20s and 30s, where we might get a short squeeze with volume. This stock, has, this stock doesn't have a volume like that. So we're not going to get a short squeeze, which is good for the stock. However, it's got negative pressure. People think that this stock is going to go lower before it goes higher. So when you have a certain amount of uh, uh, short interest here... Not enough where it's really bad and it's got too much and you might get a short squeeze with some good news. They've mentioned the good news. They've mentioned the, the new things they've got coming up. Uh, then you could get some volume and then it short squeezes and then we all make money. Great. However, we've got 13%. So we've got not enough volume, not enough short interest, but we've got enough to bring the stock down. Uh, 
More negative news here. Don't see it as a great opportunity for me. Anyway, let's uh, have a look. Five months ago, um, let's have a look. This is talk. This is about the merger that they were uh, doing at the time. Let me get a little bit of flavour for this merger. Here we go. Charlie Ergen, he's the chairman. Let's have a quick look at this and what do we have here. On, he's the CEO of EchoStar. Guys, good to have you both. Charlie, it's been a long time. I'm sorry we're not in person, but I'm certainly happy to see you. Uh, 15 years ago, you know, you said, let me just look here, when you spun off EchoStar, that um, it would enable the companies to pursue the strategies that best suits their respective long-term interests um, and allow employee incentives and the like to be tied to the company's performance. Now you're saying that uh, it's compelling because it's all about growth and building long-term sustainable businesses. What changed so that you're bringing these two back together? Uh, well, good morning, David. And a lot's changed. And the, and the biggest thing is we can really build a new, we're really bringing a new athlete for telecom. And there have been a lot, of, a lot of technology changes since we spun off Dish. But there's a lot of companies that do satellite well, and there's a lot of companies that do terrestrial telecom well, but there's really not a company that, that combines connectivity in a way that you can use both terrestrial and satellite together. And with the advent of lower satellites and lower cost launches, and the advent of, of 5G standards, um, you now can put all those kind of things together. So we built this athlete that has a tremendous amount of resources, whether it be worldwide spectrum, whether it be expertise in both telco and satellite, whether it be network management skills, um, it, 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 that all comes together. And so while those, that didn't exist 15 years ago, obviously, when we, we spun the companies off, but now it makes sense to put them back together. Um, Charlie, what I hear from many of your investors, of course, is the continued question of how much capital you're going to need to be able to successfully build out your wireless business. And many would view this deal potentially under that, uh, under that perspective as simply giving you access to EchoStar's balance sheet. One saying to me, it's almost a disguised equity raise. How do you respond to those uh, yeah. questions and or concerns? Well, there's no question that, that this deal, one of the benefits of this deal is that, that it certainly strengthens our, our, our balance sheet. It certainly strengthens our runway for the next couple of years. Uh, but there'll be more to do on that. We, we, we know we have a lot of uh, capability and, and assets, and we know that we have to continue to invest in the future. It's always a mistake for companies to not invest in the future because eventually um, that catches up with you. And we've been investing for uh, over a decade and in, in, um, in, in where we think uh, connectivity is going. And I think that's going to uh, position us well uh, for the future. But, but certainly we're in a stronger position today than we, than we were yesterday. Yeah, but I mean, you spent almost $40 billion buying Spectrum. And the question is, do you have enough money? Or, you know, you, you don't seem to have access to the capital markets, at least at a level you'd like to be able to borrow at, Charlie. I mean, City's saying you're going to need and between let's, eight. And let's jump in there. If we uh, if we go to uh, if we go to the shareholders and we dilute, then the share price is now twelve sixty two. Is is going going to go down dramatically? So they can't go there either. I mean, the stock would be destroyed. Um, he's got a very good point here. Eight and a half and nine billion by two thousand twenty five. What are you going to do to raise the capital to build out this wireless business that you spent so much money acquiring the spectrum for? Yeah. Well, first of all, I think maybe the maybe the market doesn't totally understand the capital that we, that we need. That may be partly our fault, but we have a tremendous amount of assets. The combination of the company allows us to grow parts of our business, and maybe uh, Hamid can talk a little bit about EchoStar and some of the some of the things that they're doing because they certainly are, are cash flow positive, the EBITDA positive, so they bring a lot of uh, skill sets. But when you put the companies together, uh, there are there are some synergies and there are uh, some business opportunities that we otherwise wouldn't have. I mean, I mean, I will come to you. You're going to be running a, cha a company that's challenged, at least in some of the core businesses. You know, the satellite TV, TV business, I mean, they, you just reported lost 294,000 subscribers. I think you're below half of your previous size. Uh, EBITDA burden from the wireless build out. Revenues running at a rate of about 8.6 percent decline a year. Your leverage ratio is 7.2. That's for DISH I'm talking about. So I don't want to um, I don't know the combined company. What do you do here when you run this company? What's number one on your list of things you got to accomplish? So, you know, um, David, here, here's where we have t technology meeting opportunity. I think we have a portfolio, unique portfolio of assets here um, that provide us with almost any form of connect connectivity. You know, we have anything from engineering and manufacturing and 
um, you know, content delivery and you know, uh, mobile wireless. I think we ought to bring this to, together in a synergistic way. There's a lot of synergies that can be created as a result of combined operation, but more importantly, bring in products to market that are bundled properly. Now, there are 17 mil million households in the United States that do not have proper broadband connectivity. And you know, that, that's a requirement to participate in digital economy. And uh, we have 18 million subscribers that are spread across three or four different lines of business in, in, the, in the combined company. I think this opens a lot of doors for us to bring new products to market, to bundle the products in the market and satisfy the needs of the consumers. So um, I, I expect to uh, you know, take advantage of that unique um, uh, differentiation. I think as Charlie referred to it as a new um, you know, athlete in telecom. And I think we're going to put that to use. Joining me now on a CNBC exclusive. There we go. Uh, that's... Uh the, the, this is not one for me. It's it, it's too risky. I don't think is anything proprietary about it. I think um, they're going. They, it sounds like they're going to need to go to the investor to raise more money as well. Anyway, let's look at the sentiment of the stock and then wrap up and look at a uh, our, our, our back test finally. Um, so the last ninety days, uh, neutral news. So nothing bad. It's just ticking along, um, but. Uh, 20% positive. The last 30 days hasn't really changed. Last seven days hasn't really changed. Uh, and today we've got no news. Okay, okay, that's fine. Let's go to, um, let's go now over to the back test and see how the company would perform. If you were buying this company, you've got to compare it to something else. You've got to compare it to the S&P, Okay. Uh, if we if look at the S&P, the S&P is in blue. Uh, 10,000 would have returned you nearly a 5X since 2011. $48,000 you'd have now. Fantastic. Great. Uh, now, EcoStar is in red. If you'd put in $10,000, you'd be down to 8,000 since 2011. It's a long, long time. And that is reinvesting dividends where available. Okay, automatically reinvesting the dividends, in case you're wondering. Uh, 2020, uh, we can see uh, COVID was an impact for the S&P and, and um, EcoStar, but it can, once, once uh, COVID hit, it, that killed it. It's never recovered from there. Now, COVID is a one-off, one -off, potentially, hopefully, a one-off event, but... It didn't ever really come back from there, did it? If we look at it, it was going sideways. Back up and down, it's secular, but it looks a bit like oil. A bit like Tesco's. A bit like the price of wheat or like the price of oil or whatever. Up and down, a bit secular, right? And then COVID came and bang. From that moment on, we were on a trajectory to go down. There's something recently here, but, uh, you know... Generally speaking, we're trending down. So let me give my fi my uh, final thoughts on this. Uh, I w it, it uh, I wouldn't buy this. I don't think it's proprietary enough, unique enough, special enough. I think there's better opportunities out there. It has a lot of debt. However, that can be a catalyst for uh, a good. A good earnings because when rates come down, which they will in the spring, in the summer, spring to summer, then that could really help the business. But they've got a lot. A lot they've got a lot of debt. It's manageable. It's not too bad, uh, but it's it's okay. But the problem is, if they're trying to compete and want to spend money, they've got to raise money somehow. So they've got to borrow more money, or they've got to go to the shareholder. Neither one of those is is very very good. If we look again to where we are over the, the maximum period. We're down 63% over the maximum period. So that's not looking healthy at all. Um, you can just as well buy the S&P. I think uh, uh, um, Starlink will be available to IPO in a few years' time. That would be a better buy if you wanted to buy that. I don't think uh, it's... Uh, really that attractive. There is some exciting news the, the, what they're trying to do with um, the airlines. That was quite good. Their intrinsic value was quite good for the money they hold, the profit they hold, the debt they hold. Their, their intrinsic value was okay. There was no, there was no uh, trap there. But the way I look at it is this. I don't know 
if a company can't be successful since 2000, you know, really return any profits overall from, from 2000, was it 2000, uh, 1980, whatever to, to, to now. Uh, I mean, yes, it did have a rally in the first few years, but, uh, now it's just faded away. Um, I don't know if it can reinvent itself. I think technology has improved and there are new innovations and there are new possibilities, but there are new companies going to do it better. Uh, I don't know. So for me, it's not a buy, but it, the intrinsic value definitely is on is on par. It definitely is under value if you think it can compete and it and it can uh, it, it can make a difference. But to me, it looks a bit uh, of an older technology. Uh, you know, it looks like an AT and T. It looks like Ford. The people that are buying it are similar. Too much short interest. I just don't think it's a good investment. It might be a good product. In fact, you know, we have direct TV here in the house. We, we probably have some sort of, you know, connection to this. I have spectrum internet, which is to do with that, I suppose. But uh, I, I use the services. I'll be, I'm a customer, but I'm not an investor. Anyway, click above my head for all the links uh, and uh, down below also, you'll find the links for my alpha spread. If you like the software that I'm using, the most advanced algorithmic, algorithmic software, uh, you can uh, get a discount as a member and uh, my members get a lifetime discount. I'm making this during a live video, so I'm going to put the alpha spread link in the chat right now. There you go. There's the information right there. And so you can get that uh, over here. I'll post my full alpha spread uh, review. I've re I reviewed nearly 50 companies now like this for my members. It's a free service I provide to my members and uh, also uh, meet the CEO series will be here as well. And you can go and check that out. I invite all the CEOs of the companies that I review to be on my show to reply to my reviews until next time. As always, take care of yourself and each other.